Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. The story of the UK is an economy that has got real momentum. What is broken can be repaired. What is ruined can be rebuilt. UK inflation is becoming much more homegrown. We have huge potential as an economy in the UK. This is a time to tell Israel there is a path to peace. Our plan for the British economy is working, but the work is not done. Hello, you're listening to Bloomberg UK Politics. I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm James Walcock. Today on the podcast, we are going to be taking you north of the border to Scotland for the one most important story in politics today. Hamza Youssef caught in a political battle. Have we seen the high mark of the Scottish National Party? Caroline, Westminster often ignores what is going on in Scotland to their peril. I mean, you go back to their meteoric rise in 2010 after decades, and you go back decades of single-digit SNP MPs, and all of a sudden, to Westminster watchers, Labour were utterly wiped out. 56 seats for 59 in Scotland. But that wasn't utterly sudden changes. That was a decades-long struggle that upended how the left wing, the Labour Party's calculus about how they win elections in the UK. The question now is, like as you were saying, does that all seem to be coming crashing down under this cloud of scandal and voter exhaustion. Yeah, so to the detail then, Humza Yusuf, Scotland's first minister, ended the SNP's power-sharing deal with the Green Party in Scotland yesterday. The Greens were not happy about it. Lorna Slater, co-leader of the party, called it an act of political cowardice. Taking advantage of the situation, you might say the opposition Conservatives launched a vote of no confidence in Yusuf himself, which the Labour Party, Liberal Democrats, also say they will support. Now, that leaves us with both Humza Youssef and the SNP's political futures really hanging in the balance. So we're going to talk about what it means for Scotland, for independence and also for the UK general election. Joining us now to discuss is Liz Lloyd, former chief of staff to Nicola Sturgeon, now a partner at Flint Global. Liz, on X, you've written the SNP has not achieved a clear narrative, a clear purpose or good communication of the government agenda, which is pretty damning given your former roles. And you say that Yusuf's time as a first minister, um, and you're, it's going to be either sort of the making or the ending of it, sort of starting today. Was this all inevitable? I mean, have the Greens been too influential or is it Yusuf's fault? So it wasn't inevitable that it ended like this. I think that's the key point. Um, it was feeling increasingly inevitable that the agreement between the SNP and the Greens was too much of a distraction for both parties. You know, the SNP had recently had to ditch some 2030 climate targets, for example, and they were asking the Greens to vote for that. That was going to be very difficult for Green Party members. And there are other issues around trans issues and gender rights, social issues where not everyone in the SNP is on the same page as the Green. So it was becoming difficult, but it could have ended in an agreement, if you like. Instead of Hamza Youssef standing up on his own yesterday and saying, I have sacked the Greens, effectively, you could have seen them standing together saying, do you know what? We've decided that we're better off working with the SNP as a minority government and Greens will use our influence as part in Parliament. But maybe we've also agreed to support the First Minister in votes of no mm. confidence to get something in a budget. That's what I would have expected to happen. Okay. Quite why they went for this very dramatic assertion of authority, other than perhaps he thought he hasn't been asserting his authority very well lately, to just chuck them out and therefore upset them so much that they are willing to vote against him in a vote of no confidence. Seems a bit reckless. Hmm. Yeah, uh, and the Greens were already planning to poll their own party about, you know, the deal for their own members. So hence the Greens accusing Yusuf, Yusuf of cowardice. Um, it seems like you're saying very clearly that is this is a deep sort of political failure of Hamza Yusuf himself. But he now is in perhaps a kind of no-win situation. He faces this no-confidence vote. If he loses, he'll have to resign. If he wins, he'll be leading a minority government. Um, he'll be seen basically as a lame duck leader who's caved to Alex Salmon's party. I mean, he's, he's, this is just no-win all round. I mean... So first thing I'd say is there's been quite a lot of motions of no confidence in the Scottish Parliament over the years. Like you said uh, earlier, you know, Westminster doesn't always pay attention to these things, but it's not as unusual as it is in Westminster, particularly because the SNP has led to previous minority governments. And there's a long way to go before the vote, which will probably not be until Thursday. But what I think the SNP and Yusuf need to do now is basically take a bit of a step back, take a breath, you know, a minority government can work, but you have to work out who your friends are before you enter into that. 
And they need to see if there is any hope in the next few days of them getting some support back from the Greens. You know, the Greens and the SNP are, are shared partners, if you like, in the independence movement. Are the Greens really going to vote to bring down an SNP first minister? That They might well, they're that angry. But that is a question that some of their activists will be asking. For Yusuf, if he survives, the government is fundamentally unstable. I mean, he cannot govern essentially in hoc to Alex Salmond's Alba party. There will be people on his own benches who will not be happy with that. So he's kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. Now, I, I know you say it's happened before and I take that on, but even you, as someone as expert as you are, Liz, say there are if you are raising the question, if he survives on that question of working out who your true friends are, who are Yusuf's friends inside the SNP? Is the party really united behind him at this point? He has a problem which, if you like, we didn't have under Nicola Sturgeon, we didn't have under Alex Hammond. He has a chunk of backbenchers gathered around Kate Forbes, the former leadership candidate who have just not been happy with his leadership and are quite vocal about it and are quite willing to vote against the government, which is something that SNP leaders haven't had to deal with before. And so he has a really tricky balancing act between the sort of more progressive wing of his party, who are the majority, I would say, and who are uncomfortable with the idea of being supported by Alex Salmond's party, and the more sort of economically conservative part of the party, who are also to some extent socially conservative as well, who find it very difficult to be with the Greens. So it's really hard to see how he manages to unite the party behind him and manage to win votes in the parliament. Mm, OK, so if there are doubts about whether he can survive long term, what would be the best outcome in your view for the SNP? Who should take over if he doesn't win, if he, if he ends up, as you say, in the next few days, one way or the other, not being... First Minister not being SNP leader, who should take over? You know, I think this is a real challenge for the party because they're not united behind Hamza Youssef and they're unlikely to unite behind Kate Forbes. And there's no one else really stepping up. You know, there's a long-standing rumour in Scotland that the Westminster leader, Stephen Flynn, wants to get to Hollywood and wants to take over, but he can't do that for a couple of years. And even then, he doesn't necessarily have the support. You know, it's a strange thing to say, but a lot of people, I think, would kind of call for somebody like John Swinney, former Deputy First Minister to Nicola Sturgeon, to step in temporarily. He's not in a place where he's going to do that. He was very clear he was leaving government. So it leaves him in a bit of a bind. If Hamza Yusuf resigns, I think the most likely person to step up will be Kate Forbes. And it may well be that no one else is willing to do it. And so she gets it almost by default. Liz, do you you feel this is a party that has any energy left in the tank. I mean, you've spent your working career working for this party. You cannot say it's in a good state right now, let alone an election winning one. I think there's there's two different aspects to the SNP. There's is its operation, you know, its sort of professional operation in government and in party headquarters, is that working as well as it used to? It clearly isn't. And whether that's down to the direction of the politicians or whether that's down to a bit of a turnover in the advisors and staff, you know, the, the experts who knew how to win in one election, you know, that's not quite clear. I don't want to lay the blame on any of my former colleagues, but the activist base, the MPs, the MSPs who are out there in communities, they are up for it. So there's a real mismatch between people on the ground who say, you know, we're going to work really hard, we're going to try and win. And those who are really struggling to give them a message, to give them the policy and to give them the direction to do that. Now, a Westminster election when Labour are on the up is always difficult for the SNP. You know, it's before 2015, we not really had more than, I think, 11 seats in the party's history. The most recent election before that, we'd had six. You know, so nobody expects to get back to the sort of 50-odd seats that we've had before. There will definitely be a fall. Okay. The risk right now is that that fall is really, really severe. Absolutely. I mean, as you say, Labour in the ascendancy across the UK and they are eyeing Scotland in order to win the landslide that they clearly sort of want. How much lower? Is it 20 seats, 30 seats for the SNP at the, at the general election? I mean, if you looked at Poland currently, and, and, and this can swing on literally 1% in Scotland, you know, there's so mm. many seats that are very finely balanced. You know, both parties would come back with essentially 20 something seats. And it would be in the balance who has more than the other. I think at the moment on the trajectory that the SNP is on, Labour are likely to win that in Scotland. There is time. I mean, the election may not be for a good couple of months yet. 
this mini meltdown, if you like, that the SNP is having might well be the kick that it needs to sort itself out. Or okay, though, but on that, it'll be that the end of this current regime. Well, well quite. You've taken me there. Um, after the year that Yusuf has had, and like you say, all the issues from everything involving trans rights and other sort of faux pas, who do you think would win more seats at this point, Kate Forbes or Hamza Yusuf? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, they both kind of pull different parts of the party. I think pre this week, I would have said Hamza. This raises a lot of questions. Kate's, Kate's politics is very popular in some parts of the country, but not in others. She, she is probably the person Labour would most like to stand against hmm. because she is much more conservative aligned than, if you like, Labour aligned. Hamza Youssef and Hamza Youssef's type of politics presents more of a challenge to Labour in Scotland. So Labour, I think, would love a Kate Forbes uh, leadership because that would work for them. They think that would help them. So I suppose that would lead you to say Hamza Youssef, but people's confidence in Hamza Youssef is going to be really rough. Um, does this put back then the cause of independence? I mean, Nicola Sturgeon wanted another vote on it, and that seems really pretty distant now. The one interesting thing about Scottish politics over the last year, while the SNP has struggled, is that support for independence remains around 50% of the population. It has not been affected by the SNP's difficulties at all. Um it's obvious to everyone in Scotland that a referendum is not happening in you know, the next few years, potentially the next parliament. So that's not top of people's minds, but the support for independence remains and it remains regardless of party troubles. So, you know, a Labour Party that wins a UK general election and then tries to win a seat in the Scottish Parliament, maybe take over the government in Scotland, is still going to face the challenge of a population, half of which wants to leave the United Kingdom. Liz, I can't help but see some parallels between Hamza Youssef and Rishi Sunak, a leader that's come in towards the end of a term who has suffered in terms of popularity, has issues with managing their own party and has been bequeathed a legacy of scandal. So do you see some parallels between the situation that Boris Johnson left Rishi in (laughs) and the one that Nicola Sturgeon left Hamza Youssef in? And do you think Nicola needs to take some responsibility for that? You know, the biggest fall in the SNP's polling was actually when Nicola Sturgeon stood down. Essentially, people in Scotland trusted her, they were led by her, and they didn't know the new guy. They didn't know who was in charge. And I think the problem the SNP's had over the last year is not hugely the police investigation. That doesn't have a huge electoral impact. It's that they have a new leadership, and that leadership hasn't managed to give people in Scotland the confidence that they know what they're doing. Liz Lloyd, thank you so much for being with us. The former Chief of Staff to Nicola Sturgeon, our partner of Flint Global. Thank you so much for your time. That's it from us for today. If you like the programme, don't forget to subscribe and give it five stars so other people can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen. This episode was produced by Tiwa Adebayo and our audio engineer was Sean Guastamacchia. I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm James Wilcock. We'll be back with more next week. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg UK Politics. Listen weekdays at noon on DAB Digital Radio in London.